It's your boy GC once again, and this time around we're still in Japan and we are heading over to Kyoto. We actually had a lot of activities and stuff that we had planned to go over there. So we first got on the train, got off. So right by the station was a little mini mart, basically a convenience store. And they had a lot of snacks like usual that you could grab on the go because where we were headed was actually going to be like a little hike so always good to just stock up because you don't know when the next stop's going to be anyway so we got the egg sandwich which is basically egg salad in white bread and you always could expect the same consistency when you get some of these sandwiches up in japan they're always going to be pretty fresh pretty decent nothing out of the norm now here is natto which is a fermented soybean roll and a lot of people don't like it because it's supposed to smell funky. I never had it, so I want to try it because it's actually super healthy for you. It's got a lot of vitamin K2 up in there, so here it goes. It's got a funky flavor to it, but it wasn't as bad as I expected. So it wasn't great, but it wasn't as bad as I thought. So it was actually something I could get down with just for the health benefits. So anyways, we're in Arashiyama, which is like the countryside. And there is like a town over there, which was actually the old capital of Japan where the emperor once resided. So it does have a long history and a lot of people do come over there for the sightseeing. So right here, we actually booked a rickshaw ride, which is basically somebody pulling you while you sitting in the carriage and you kind of like get pulled by this guy over here. And we actually got the 45 minute package. So it kind of like takes you all around the little town and shows you all the historical sites and tells you a little bit about its history and cool places to visit and our guy over here Yoshi he was like cool as hell he was very fluent in English and he kind of like took us to all the scenic spots and even offered to take pictures with us and all that stuff it was pretty cool man so here is the Arashiyama bamboo forest which is actually pretty famous because a lot of samurai movies was uh, filmed over in this location and you're gonna notice there's gonna be a lot of temples in this area as well because they're just very well preserved from hundreds of years ago. And you'll hear this kabuki music playing. So this part of the forest is actually very famous for its filming location. And at the same time, a lot of people come over here to take pictures and videos and sightsee and all that. So actually we get off the rickshaw where he actually like walks us around some of the areas. And this right here used to be a house that was turned into a cafe, but it's been around for hundreds of years. It's always just so good to see a lot of this stuff preserved because they've been around for so long. And, you know, I feel like Japan just does so well with preserving its ancient architectures and artifacts and stuff. So this is the end of the rickshaw ride and you get this little scenery as you're walking past and this is very famous because it's where the emperor used to take his boat and just hang out and write poetry or haikus and stuff. So at the end, the guy gave us like a sticker and also a like a blotting paper for like oily skin. And then off we went over to just do some shopping and walk around on the main street where all the shops and touristy stuff is. So you're gonna see a lot of places that has pastries and snacks you can buy. Some of the stuff here that you, you can't get it anywhere else in Japan because they're, they're natively made in Kyoto, so it's pretty cool. They have like exclusive stuff that you could get here, like Rilakkuma stuff that's exclusive to Kyoto and, and just a lot of different gifts and stuff you can buy to take back home. So we end up buying a few things here or there. Definitely bought uh, quite a few snacks to take back home. I noticed a lot of snacks over here actually has a lot of matcha products up in there. So it's like green tea powder they put on everything. Even these little rice dumplings right here. So in Japanese, they call this the mitarashi dango. Dango is a rice dumpling. It's almost like a mochi, except they put like this sweet and salty glaze of soy syrup on there. And it comes out pretty hot too. So when you bite into it, it's like super soft, super squishy. And you get like a sweet, savory soy sauce flavor in there. You also taste a little bit of this char flavor on there because it's actually grilled, as you can see with the little black spots on each ball. That's my first time trying it out. I actually really enjoyed it. So anyways, we went to get some more dessert. 
which we went to Creamio right here. And Creamio is kind of like the haagen of Japan, man. They're, they're known for having like some of the best ice cream soft serves. Now they have a bunch of other snacks you could buy too, but mainly we went for the ice cream soft serves and we ended up getting the hojicha, which is the roasted green tea. Roasted green tea soft serve. Oh man, it's like super creamy. But it's like super light. Almost like a, a sorbet, but creamy. That roasted flavor is really nice. Prima, premium. Try that out. Both of the best in Japan. So after doing some shopping and getting some snacks, it was time to head to the Higashiyama Ward. And this was a train ride back into the main city of Kyoto. Now we was trying to find this place called Gion Duck Noodles and it's supposed to be a duck ramen place. It was kind of hard to find because it had no signs or nothing like that. It just has like an uh, emoji of like a duck and uh, noodles. So even if you look at the menu, that's all it is. It just has emojis on there. It's hella funny. ramen with two slices of duck. Or a smiley mark here, which is a special topping set with five slices of duck meat and a marinated egg. So there was a, like a little wait in line and the lady comes out and explains the menu to you, which is cool. And then you kind of just order from there. And when you sit down, the noodles are pretty much almost set. And the place is super small, man. The place probably fits like 12 people in there. So it is like a little hole in the wall joint and you know, I do like those hole in the wall spots, man. And I feel like Japan has no short of it. So we ended up ordering three items over here. Uh, we ended up ordering this right here, which is the duck ramen, which is the popular order. And then here is the sukumin. The sukumin is like a drier noodle and it's thicker. And you get this sauce right here, you actually dip it in. And this sauce is like super flavorful, man. It's kind of like on the thicker side. So when you dip it in, you actually get a lot of the sauce up in there. And the sauce is actually made fresh by the chef with his specially made broth that's reduced down with certain herbs and spices that he add up in there. So it's super flavorful, man. Like I can't even explain how good it is. It's it's got plenty of flavor up in there. Uh, the ramen as well, the, the broth is actually super clean. And what he does is he adds this little powder right there. It's a shisho leaf powder, which is a Japanese mint powder, except it doesn't taste like mint like you would think. It's more of like a citrusy flavor to it. So when you dip the duck and the noodles in there, you, you get this citrus note to it. At the same time, you get the hint of savoriness from the, the meat and the noodles and the soup. And then you get a little egg up in there. And what I love about the eggs in Japan is like, man, these are real eggs. Like, look how orange they are. Like, if you look at the ones in the US, man, they're not like that because they're just all processed and out of nutrients. So right here is actually the duck over rice with the egg yolk that you have that you could crack open in there. And just something about the Japanese egg. It's just got so much flavor. At the same time, it's super creamy. So one bite of this and you are in heaven. That's if you like duck though. If you don't, then this might not be your thing. But also what you want to do is they give you this broth that they have that you can add up in there and then it accentuates the flavor some more. So it's kind of like having two separate meals. You could try it dry, then you could try it wet. And both are great. After a nice and delicious meal, it was time to go and walk it off. So in this area is actually known for its temples. And a lot of people do go to this one. It's one of the more famous ones. And a lot of people just go over there, especially as the new year, they go over there and get their blessings and stuff like that. At the same time, when we went, it was actually a holiday. It was uh, the coming of age day, which you celebrate the coming of age for young women and men. So there's this long hill you walk up to this temple and along the way, you'll see a lot of cool stuff like this Starbucks right here, which is pretty famous because this Starbucks is actually like a residence from back in the days, convert it into a Starbucks. The best part is you could buy these cups from Starbucks, which is the Been There series. You could be like, oh, you know, I've been to Japan. So, you know, I bought this over there because they're exclusive to Japan only. Anyway, so it's quite a walk up this hill, but there's a lot of people walking up there and almost every single place you see left and right is a store. So 
you're gonna see like people dressed up in the kimono and all that stuff is because that's what they do to celebrate the coming of age so it's pretty cool pretty interesting to see and if you stay tuned on the future episodes you're gonna see me up in one as well so so it is like winter time so it is kind of cold as you go up in elevation and so i'm trying to just go up and go back down so we hurried up and went up to the temple checked it out sightseed and just basically made our way back down but it was a cool walk up we got to buy a few souvenirs here and there as well and we actually had planned to do another activity at this location so that was a main point of actually climbing up here so making our way back down we do see like a lot of cool stuff that we miss coming up and you got this cool guy doing the art of the pagoda right here and then right next to that is actually going to be the place we're going to hit up but we decided let's go back down to where the pagoda is because where we went we branched off and went up before we get to look at the pagoda so i was like let's go down there check that out and then walk our way back a little bit and go to the location we wanted to go which is this place called my only fragrance in kyoto so this place is pretty interesting you get to create your own fragrances like make your own cologne or perfume and you basically get to choose the scent that you want and mix it all together to make your own unique perfume so you also could buy the ones that they pre-make or use it as a reference and stuff to know how everything smells like but of course we're gonna go blind in there smell everything see what we like the most and see how you can blend it together to make your own personal fragrance so at the end of the day you can't blame anybody but yourself if you mess up but it is a fun experience you kind of like get to test your nose and see what smells good and then if you like it you fill it out in the card and be like i want this that and that and also you write down the amount that you want to split between the fragrances you choose into the bottle before they put it all in mix it up for you and put a label on it so for me, I kind of just tried to like make a cologne that was close to something I already use. Because for me, a lot of different colognes, they do not smell good on me. So you, I got to use like a certain type of fragrance or element that actually goes good with my chemistry. Now for me, I was actually pretty good and satisfied with what I chose because you guys already know that I'm a bartender. So I'm pretty good with mixing things, especially getting like flavors and all that stuff so i kind of like knew just by smelling certain things like i need like 15 percent of this 50 percent of that and you know blah 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 so mine came out i was very happy with it it actually smelled good i even sprayed it on myself smelled it later and it still smelled good because that's the main thing about cologne is sometimes you spray it on and it might smell good in the beginning and smell bad later so at the end you get to name what you make and they slap that on the label so it looks more personal so anyway, so after that, we decided to go to one of the more famous shrines out there, which is called the Fushimi Inari Shrine. And this shrine is actually known for its like thousand Senban Tori gates. So there's literally a thousand gates. And upon walking in, you're going to see a lot of the uh, shrines and shops where you can buy all types of different charms whether it be for protection for luck for uh, good marriage you name it they have a charm for it so here is a little map to show you where you're at and where the gates begin and literally you can walk all the way up that hill all the way to the end but we did not want to walk all that so we end up walking like maybe half of that and then turn it back around because it was actually getting hella cold and at the same time it was already getting late we wanted to make the train back to our hotel back in osaka so we kind of just took a quick stroll over through these gates here's the beginning of it and you're gonna see like all these gates are just like uniform and the significance of these gates is generally you will see one of these when you're close to a shrine so for those of you who are gamers you might have played a few games where you would run into one of these uh gates and then a shrine was close by to it now this is where the gates actually split off so we walked all the way through this part 
and then if you go all the way to the end of it you can turn back around and come back out the other gates so i feel like nighttime was actually a pretty good time to go because it was pretty empty there's not too much people there at the time so it was a pretty cool walk and it wasn't too crowded and you know just very cool sight to see so anyways this marks the end of this video and i hope you guys enjoyed the video so far and i do have more videos coming of my japan trip so i hope to see you guys next time if you guys do like the videos please like and subscribe so you get the notifications of the next video and i will see you guys on the next one it's your boy gc signing out latest